guys and welcome to my first proper episode of Safe Diving. So in today's episode, uh, basically there's a lot of interest in what scuba diving equipment that I use personally. Um, so I figured that would be my very first video. So I actually keep and uh, sort of have packed about three different kit bags uh, sort of at any given time. I have one for my cold water diving, so it's got my dry suit, my undersuit and all that kind of stuff in it. I've got another one for my warm water diving, so that's got my shorty and some boots and all that kind of stuff. And then my third bag is my kind of my grab bag, my, my go-to that has sort of everything that I might need on a diving trip. And um, that's what I'm gonna be looking into today. And I have it with me right here. Uh, let's take a closer look at what is inside my kit bag. Okay, so to start off with, uh, let's take a look at the bag itself. So the bag that I use, this is a uh, fourth element, I think they call it a manta bag. Uh, the most important thing is, is that this is a dry bag, it's that kind of hold all. So there's plenty of space on the inside, lots of attachment points. Uh, I just have a, a simple shoulder strap so I can sling it um, sort of on me if I'm sort of getting in and out of a rib or something. And um, it's, it's completely dry, so after I've sort of got changed, all of my dry stuff can go on the inside and stay dry, uh, no matter what the weather is. And then at the end of the trip, after I'm changed back into my normal clothes, all of the wet stuff can sort of go back inside here and it's gonna stay contained inside the bag and it's not gonna leak out anywhere. So on the outside, lots of clips. So it clips, uh, so it's a roll top dry bag. Um, you've got clips to help it click, keep closed. I've got that um, strap. I also have my uh, most, I mean, this is last year's uh, insurance information, just in case in an emergency. It's got all of my information there so people can um, sort of contact me and uh, sort of sort out any uh, emergency protocols. Uh, inside of the bag, this is what we're really interested in though. No. Okay, so the first thing that it usually is is gonna be my pair of bins, because they're the biggest. <clears throat> so. Apex RK3s, um, so I love these to death. They are tough as nails, uh, they're nice and compact, so no matter where you're diving, uh, they're not gonna be sort of getting in the way or feeling too cumbersome. Um, and uh, they have a decent amount of thrust, despite their size, because they're vented. Uh, they're not overly big, but um, they still have that power, and um, yeah, they're, they're really, really tough, so you can bend them, you can do whatever you want with them. They're never gonna crack, they're never gonna break. Um, spring heel straps as well, much stronger than uh, traditional bungee straps, um, and it's a lot easier than just a traditional ratchet strap. Um, so yeah, I've got those two. Uh, they're usually tied together so I can clip them off to a D-ring if I need to, but um, yeah, good pair of fins in the, uh, the RK3s. Um, I'm just gonna rummage around and pull stuff out really. Weight belt, standard weight belt, everyone needs a weight belt. Um, so um, yeah, if you need to, um, so basically what you really need is lead with this. Um, I'm more of a fan of a standard webbing weight belt, so you have to thread the lead onto it than um, the ones with soft um, sort of pouch lead. Just, just because it's it's simple, you know what it is, and you don't have to worry about any kind of threading or anything. Because um, I've seen some of those kind of pocketed weight pouches, um, the, the stitching goes and then the lead just falls out and it's gonna fall out onto your foot, and, uh, and yeah, that's gonna hurt. So I always keep a, um, a metal buckle uh, weight belt with me at all times, just in case. Uh, a spare dry suit hose, yeah, uh, low pressure inflator hose just in case. Something that will fit on uh, so that either your dry suit or your BCD uh, because the Schrader valves can and will just kind of go on the inside. So it's always worth sort of keeping a uh, spare inflator hose. Uh, even if it's not your hose that goes wrong, it's someone else's, at least you've got something. Uh, first aid kit attached onto the torch. Um, yeah, I always keep a small first aid kit with me. Um, this one used to be attached onto a bag that used to have kind of molly attachments, but uh, now it's kind of loose. And um, yeah, it's just the essentials, uh, sort of whatever you might need. Just make sure that you try and keep it up to date, um, especially with medications and whatnot, because they go off and um, try and keep it dry as much as possible. This isn't actually... Um, uh, waterproof in itself, so you do have to uh, sort of keep an eye on that, make sure that um, any sort of moisture doesn't go through and, uh, and affect any of the bits and bobs. Um, but I'll always have a first aid kit on uh, with me because um, 
it's essential if something were to go wrong. Um, my mask, so I carry two different masks with me. Um, I have them in sort of one of these cases that I got from Simply Scuba. And um, just because they're a bit nicer than those plastic cases, and um, yeah, they're, they're just as tough. <clears throat> So I carry two masks. Uh, I carry, so this is my backup mask. My backup mask is a Hollis M4. Um, I just like that kind of square shape. Um, what I have done, if you might be able to see it, is on the inside, it's got one of those anti-fog um, uh, kind of coatings on the inside. Uh, just because I don't prepare this mask with uh, sort of spit or anything uh, at the beginning of every dive, it just tends to sit in a fire pocket. Um, so this one has that special coating and uh, it, it does really work. Um, very simple, nothing overly fancy. It's frameless, so it folds down really small into a thigh pocket. And um, yeah, anyone can get on board with that. But my primary mask is an Atomic Venom Frameless. <clears throat> um, I just like larger framed masks. I tend to, I find they uh, sort of fit and look good on my face. Um, and um, what I really like about this is in its uh, sort of special gummy bear seal. So very, very soft around that seal so you don't have to wrench it on too, uh, too tight. And um, one of the main questions that I do get asked is diving with facial hair um, is how you get your, um, your mask not to leak. Uh, and the trick is, is if you get a mask with a good enough seal, it will sit on your face even if you do have facial hair And, and there it is, it's, um, it creates that seal. Yes, occasionally you do get a small amount of water, but you will with any mask. Um, but yeah, I definitely like the Atomic Venom Frameless, um, and it's, it's a good looking mask. Okay, so they live inside of their box. There's lots of stuff inside. Um, super lube. Um, a bit of um, silicone grease goes a long, long way. Um, if you can buy in uh, sort of large amounts, then it goes that little bit further. Uh, this one's quite nice because it's got quite a small applicator. Um, so yeah, just for O-rings and stuff, it's always good to have some silicone grease because you never know when you might need it. Uh, a little blowgun, just in case. <coughs> a reel, one of my many reels, if I get all my... I think that's it. So I tend to carry three. So I have my small little purple one. So this is about 15 meters. Uh, this is an Apex Lifeline spool. Um, I just like how tough it is and um, all the little details like the flared uh, cylinder of it, the size is nice and neat and um, yeah, decent uh, double ender. Just make sure it's got a nice smooth end. Um, I, um, I often mark some of my um, my double enders with, uh, this is a bit of inner tubing basically wrapped around because you, you can donate and you can clip things off and eventually get to the point where you're like, is this my bolt snap or is this your bolt snap? At least this way it's a little bit more obvious. This is my bolt snap um, and it's a really nice one so don't take it from me. Uh, a bigger 30 meter, because 30 meters are always useful. Um, it's exactly the same, it's just green and a bit larger. And then I have my old sort of beaten up plastic one, um, always useful. Even if you're not using it as a uh, an actual spool for whatever reason, you can um, just sort of take off some of this line and use it to, uh, to retie some bolt snaps. Um, if you have any on your room, um, so the second stage or your room, um, your SPG or whatnot, it's useful just to have some of this line and there'll probably be a cigarette lighter on the inside of this um, to, uh, to help seal it. Uh, also in my bag, I always have a snorkel, um, just a simple snorkel, nothing too fancy. Um, I, I have dived and uh, snorkeled with them when they've got the special dry valves and the little purge valves at the bottom, uh, but I just like a really simple uh, sort of tube. I like a flexible snorkel as well, so it doesn't matter if you sort of bend and twist it, um, you're not going to uh, sort of crack it, because yeah, this just tends to sit in the bottom of my kit bag and it just gets beaten. But um, yeah, if ever sort of in between dives or whatnot, you just feel like sort of jumping in the water, going for a snorkel on the surface, then um, yeah, it's much nicer to have a snorkel um, than to sort of hold your breath and look down uh, to try and see what's going on. Um, okay, a bit more meaty, my dive computer. Uh, so this is a Shearwater Perdix. Um, <clears throat> 
I love Shearwater dive computers. I like the uh, the large screen dive computer, and um, yeah, just color screens make life so much easier. And um, yeah, it's I quite like the Perdix because they're very customizable. Um, granted, I only have the kind of stock colors on it, but you can sort of customize all the different uh, sort of options and gradient factors and all the complicated uh, sort of things on the inside. Um, I always bring a uh, spare battery just in case, and um, and yeah, I just have it fitted with the uh, the standard uh, sort of elasticated straps on with that. Uh, they're really long in case I'm diving with my dry suit, and um, so I never cut that off. And I keep that inside of the um, the little case just to keep it protected because um, it will get beaten up in, uh, in my kit bag. Uh, line arrows and uh, a bit of bungee just in case. A smaller dry bag, so this is really useful for your mobile phone and um, sort of any of these bits. I usually put like my wallet and my uh, my car keys and whatnot on the inside of this. This is like my valuable um, sort of bag that I want to keep everything sort of safe and contained, everything that's usually in my pockets. Um, but then you want to keep it dry as well, so it stays inside of that, inside of that, just in case the uh, the worst should ever happen. Uh, tools. I always bring some tools with me. So Allen keys. Um, oh, this case is almost falling apart. Uh, Allen keys just for sort of field repair. I'm actually missing one. I have to find that. Um, yeah, field repairs and regulators. If you don't have an Allen key, then you're kind of scuppered. Um, I also have. Somewhere. It'll turn up a uh, an adjustable spanner just in case because um, yeah again swapping out hoses uh, sort of on the fly if you um, if you don't have it then um, yeah, you're, you're really stuffed. Um, a compass wrist mounted compass just on bungee loops. Um, this is a Sunto. This is like an SK8 or an SK7 and um, yeah always really really useful just so that you know which direction you're facing um, I, I'm okay with digital compasses but uh, I do like a good analog one uh, because you can really feel which direction you're, um, you're facing um, a little tub of this is basically water mixed with baby shampoo um, and I use this for defogging my mask um, uh, I might need to walk that down a little bit, this might be quite fresh. But um, yeah, baby shampoo is very, very effective at preventing your mask from fogging up. So um, so that's very, very beneficial. And no more tears, so it's, uh, it's quite nice. Um, oh, here's some actual line. So this is just for tying off bolt snaps uh, onto anything. This is just spare line, um, just in case you need to do some quick field repairs and tie things off. Uh, spare mask strap, two spare mask straps. They always break, so it's always worth having a spare or two. Um, bolt snaps, I tend to have loads of bolt snaps. I really like these little X deep um, jobs. So these are particularly good for attaching onto uh, sort of tools. So um, if you're doing anything underwater and you need to attach a bolt snap, just to clip it off onto something um, or onto a second stage so that you know where it's clipped off to, uh, a torch, whatever it is, I tend to attach one and you've got the line to attach it on the go. Uh, if I ever pick one up, it just ends up in the bag. Uh, what else have we got? O-rings, spare O-rings, uh, the adjustable spanner that I was looking for earlier. I know a lot of people, um, uh, myself included, we always say never use adjustable spanners because they can slip. There's that little bit of gif, uh, gib, gib, give, um, sort of in that action. So it's best to have the actual uh, sort of fitting, but hoses use so many different fittings and they're either imperial or metric that bringing an entire toolbox with you is impractical so um, just a decent uh, adjustable spanner is uh, is useful spare o-rings um, these actually match up with my regulators so these are 112s i believe um, double check which size o-ring sometimes it's best to have two different uh, the 111s and the 112s uh, but yeah just spare 10 o-rings are always useful uh, small compact DSMB. Uh, this is like an old Hollis, uh, I believe. 
finish there where they're compact job. So just something small that I can stow away. Um, doesn't take up any space in, uh, in five pockets or anything. But um, yeah, it, in a pinch, this is gonna get you um, sort of out of a lot of surface winds um, to try and get yourself um, noticed on the surface so yeah I always have at least one DSMB on me and that's a closed cell so that will never collapse even when it's uh, sort of on the surface by itself spare cable ties for mouthpieces um, yeah the number, of, I, the number of things that you can fix with a cable tie uh, is incredible and uh, and yeah these are particularly useful so I always carry a whole bunch of spares um, I have a couple knives on me but those aren't my only ones. So my primary knife, so this one sits on my belt. This is a DIR zone, just a very compact little dive knife. It's serrated, it's blunt, um, and it just sits neatly threaded onto my waist belt. Um, so I know it's always there, and that's really quick and easy, just to cut through stuff. I also have a Scuba Pro titanium knife. Bought this years and years ago, and it looks almost as good as new. Uh, I don't attach it onto my leg or whatnot. This just tends to sit in a pocket. Um, and um, yeah, that's just my, I never have to worry about it knife. My sort of redundant backup. It's got serration on it. Uh, it's got a straight cutting edge if you ever use that. Um, but um, the main reason I carry this is because it's titanium, um, it's light and it never rusts, so you don't have to worry about um, sort of keeping it clean. Uh, an A clamp adapter, I don't think I've ever used this in the water to be honest, it's, uh, it's just nice to have just in case uh, you come across a place and it doesn't have any dim tank valves, but, um, but yeah, an A clamp adapter, always useful. A couple pens, pens are always useful, filling out log books, um, Everyone has a friend who always forgets their pens, so a couple of spares are always useful. Cigarette lighter, um, yeah, that's for the uh, the line if you need to tie something off, just to stop it from fraying. Um, you just sort of melt the end and then sort of squidge it down and that stops that from fraying. Um, but it also keeps knots nice and tight. Um, I have a mount for my torch. So this is a sort of Goodman style mount that obviously goes around your wrist and then my torch sort of screws onto that. Um, my torch isn't actually in here, I presume it's charging up somewhere. Um, but yeah, I like a Goodman style handle because you can still use your hand to do stuff whilst uh, sort of still holding onto your torch. Uh, and then just the small bits and bobs. Um, valves and stuff for my P-valve. Um, if you wanna know what a P-valve is, Google it. Um, some port plugs, always useful just in case you need to um, get rid of a hose, uh, you can sort of take it off. And um, spare mouthpiece, there's always spares. Um, a little hose attachment. These can get people out of a lot of dodge, especially if you don't want to donate one of your precious bolt snaps. Um, if someone has a sort of floppy octo or something, uh, and they just want to clip it up onto something, this is a very inexpensive way to uh, just go, oh, there you go, and then if they walk off with it, it's not the end of the world. Uh, and this is a Apex uh, sort of hose retainer bar. So this uh, sort of acts Basically, if I'm not using a canister battery, um, or if I don't want to use my um, uh, my knife, this can kind of sit on your hip, and this helps with hose routing. So, because I dive with a long hose primary donate, so the regulator hose starts up at your cylinder valve, and then it loops down, but then it has to loop under and then back up and around to kind of hold it from uh, sort of flapping around down here or sort of tightening up under your shoulder. This just sits there, you tuck the hose underneath that and that sort of makes it nice and neat. You can still donate and then it kind of unhooks really easily from that. Um, but yeah, a very light and effective way at um, sort of keeping your hoses nice and neat. Uh, and I think that is it. Um, the rest is just dust. But um, yeah, those are the basics that I, um, that I kind of dive with or that's kind of always with me on pretty much every single trip. Now some of them I will uh, sort of cut back with uh, depending on sort of where I'm traveling to, but 
if I'm diving in the UK especially, then yeah, this is definitely um, sort of what comes with me. Now, if you want to see what's in my other bags, my cold water bag and my warm water bag, then um, let me know down in the comments below. And if there's anything that you want to see of my dive gear, then of course, put it down in the comments below and I'll kind of show you what I dive with and why. Um, if you enjoy this, then of course, don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Uh, I'm just starting out my channel, so that really, really helps me out. Um, all the kind of like the tips and everything and commenting, just, just have a good discussion below because that really, really helps with the channel. Um, as always, stay safe. Um, just sort of make sure you and your family are safe and, uh, and healthy at this time. Uh, thank you for watching and of course, safe diving.